Shalom, Israel, Most High in Christ. Bless. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captain. I'm Captain Zabit. To my left, I have Soji Boda. Today, we're going to talk about the importance of uh, saving money. Last class we did, we talked about uh, how to plan, how to organize, how to really maximize the time of your day to really move forward in reference to now I got my fringes on, now I'm keeping a Sabbath. Now, I, now you want to really start getting into the nuts and bolts of how to be a better man, how to be a brother, better brother, how to be a better sister, a better father, right? So you start to organize, you start to plan your life, right? And today we're going to talk about how to really start saving your money, how to start putting a financial plan in place. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. Yeah. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, mm -hmm. that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. So he part of him establishing this covenant was also him giving us wealth. We have the power, we have the ability through the Most High, through Christ, to receive wealth, right? But what we do today on this planet with our financial means is important to the financial means that we will receive in the kingdom of heaven. And we're going to look at that. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. First, we want to talk about kind of why we in this rut. Why we in this, this circle of financial distress, right? Come on. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 28. Yeah. The Lord shall smite thee with madness mm -hmm. and blindness mm -hmm. and astonishment of heart. So that madness, that blindness, a lot of times, for most of us, our parents didn't know how to financially plan. They didn't have any financial means in place. They didn't have a, a, a goal in place. They didn't have any of those things in place. And so they didn't have those things, so they didn't teach us those things. So a lot of us are in this circle where we didn't learn it from our parents, but we can learn it now from the scriptures. Right. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. There's a book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 43. Mm -hmm. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, mm -hmm. and thou shalt come down very low. So what is that talking about? Today, a lot of times, when we look at uh, the, the banking systems today, right? We look at Chase and Wells Fargo and places like that. These banking systems were put in place while we was in slavery. So we we stuck. We, we 20 steps behind these people that already have established things like banks. Right. And then now that we out of the captivity and we got the bank set up, we, we use things like payday loans. Right. And when you use payday loans, they got interest rates as high as 500 percent. And, and you can't never seem to get out of these circles. Right. And the, the other nations are the ones that set up these payday loan uh, areas in our neighborhoods. That's where they set them up. They don't set up payday loans place in, in, in Edomville. They don't set up payday loans in Elonville. No, it's in your hood. It's in your area. It's where the where the Jews resort. That's where these payday loans is at, right? Where the Israelites at, right? Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. There's a book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 48. Mm -hmm. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, mm -hmm. which the Lord shall send against thee mm -hmm. in hunger. So for food, that we work all day and we take our money, we have to give it back to those nations that we work for. Because it's financial benefit made off of the money we spend to get food. Go ahead. And in thirst. And the same thing applies for water. It's financial gain. It's profit. Uh, for these other nations, though. Not for us. It's profit for these other nations. Go ahead. And in nakedness. And for clothes. They other uh, nations profit off of these things. Go ahead. And in want of all things. So when we look at our education system, right, we, the, we have to pay money to go to school. You want to go to college? You want to get a certification or something like that? You have to pay these other nations to get these different things. And guess what? These things and these financial loans that we have to take out in order to get into college, that puts us in more debt. Now we, in, now we stuck paying college loans for, for 20, 30 years like another mortgage, right? Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 16, verse 10. So we understand these curses are in place, right? We get it. But there is an importance to saving money, and it's going to hurt, right? We got to still find a way because the scripture said in Deuteronomy 8, verse 18, that the Lord gives us power to get wealth. That was part of his covenant. Right, and it's not some Christianity thing, right? Some prosperity doctrine. We're not saying any of that. We are saying that it is important for us to save money, though. Luke 16, verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least. So if you're faithful in a little bit of money you have today in this captivity, what's going to happen? Go ahead. Is faithful also in much. So when you get into the kingdom of heaven, the Lord can say, you know what? You was able to take care of the small amount of money you had while you was there. Now, when I move to the kingdom, I, can, I know that you'll be a responsible steward of the funds now. You'll know how to budget. You'll know how to plan ahead. you know how to organize the money and make sure things are going the way they're supposed to go. Go ahead. Go to 11 as well. And he that is unjust in the least 
is unjust also in much. So you're gonna be unjust. you're gonna get into the kingdom of heaven. You're not gonna be able to, to to manage the Lord's money properly. You're not gonna be able to do it because you ain't disciplining yourself here now. Go, that was the end of that. No, sir. Go ahead. Verse eleven. Mm -hmm. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, mm -hmm. who will commit to your trust? The true riches. So if you can't be righteous, you can't take care of the finances that you got here, he's not going to commit to you the true riches. You think he's going to be like, you know what, you ain't never managed your money right on uh, while you was in your captivity. Now you're going to get out with all this financial freedom. Now you're going to know how to how to handle the money. Now you're going to blow it all away. Give it all right back. You know what I'm saying? Let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 12. This is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. For wisdom is a defense, yep. and money is a defense. Money is a defense. What we got to understand is money is a defense. Was that the end of that? No, sir. Go ahead. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom give it life to them that have it. What we got to understand is that knowledge is a defense, right? The, the, what does it mean is a defense? When things go wrong, when stuff happens, the unexpected happens, you have put money aside for those issues, they call it things like a rainy day fund, right? You got your rainy day fund set up so you can now, oh, the car broke down. Oh, uh, somebody, my, my spouse just lost their job. Uh, this unforeseen thing just happened. I got surgery. I got this. I got that. Whatever it might be, right? Unfor things, unforeseen things happen, and now it's like, what can you do? You know what I'm saying? But money is a defense. If you got a rainy day fund set up, you good. You can make it through that that tough time financially. Let's go to Sirach chapter 14 and verse 3. This is the book of Sirach chapter 14 and verse 3. Yeah. Riches are not comely for a nigger. Riches are not comely for, for people that don't know how to save. It don't make no sense to give it to you. Go ahead. And what should an envious man do with money? What should what it don't make no sense to give you money if you envious. You don't know how to you don't know how to handle it. You don't know how to handle that financial uh means that you might have. Let's go to Proverbs 27 and verse 12. Riches are uncommonly for a nigga. It don't make sense for the Lord to give somebody that don't know how to manage their finances money. It don't make no sense. Proverbs 27 and 12. There's a book of Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 12. Yeah. A prudent man foresee it the evil. But what you're supposed to do is, is the importance of saving money, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to look ahead and say, you know what, this could go wrong. Let me make sure I put some money up for this. But what happens even amongst our people today, right, even amongst us that say we Israel, Right, what we tend to do is like, I'm I'm gonna go to the Passover. Okay, you go to the Passover and you spend all your money. Now you can't pay your rent. Now you can't pay your car note. Your car getting repo because you're not looking ahead. You're not having foresight. You could be planning and putting that money up ahead of time. And if you didn't have the ability to do that, sometimes you have to take a step back. You have to say, you know what? I can't make it this year. I'm gonna plan ahead for next year though. I can't make it to the quest this year, but I'm gonna plan ahead for next year. That's what. That's what. Read that again. A prudent man. That's what prudent men do. Go ahead. Foresee it, the evil, mm -hmm. and hide it himself. Mm -hmm. But the simple pass on. But the simple say, you know what? I don't, I don't see nothing wrong with me just wasting my money. You know what I'm saying? Not saying you waste your money going to pass over the question and that, but you gotta see that the evil or the problem that will arise. Now I'm not gonna be able to pay my light bill. Now I can't feed my baby. Now these things are happening because I didn't look ahead. Let's go for it. How do you save? Let's look at things that you can use, different tools you can use on how you can start to save your money. Come on. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 47 and verse 24. Yeah. And it shall come to pass in the increase mm -hmm. that ye shall give the fifth part unto Pharaoh. So when we look at this, right, this is the forefather Joseph, right? He's giving you a blueprint on how to save money, right? Read that one more time. And it shall come to pass in the increase mm -hmm. that ye shall give the fifth part unto Pharaoh. The fifth part is making reference to 20%. You should be saving around 20%. But how do I do that? How do I do that? Right, let's finish that. Finish the scripture. And it shall come to pass in the increase mm -hmm. that ye shall give the fifth part unto Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. And four parts shall be your own. So four parts. So that's the money that you utilize from day to day, right? But you're supposed to be putting some up. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Right, let's go to Sirach chapter 31 verse 3. So these are things that you should be doing. This is how you save money. How do you do it? This is a book of Sirach, chapter 31 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. The rich had great labor in gathering riches together. That's what we avoid, right? That great labor. We, we avoid that discipline, that, that muscle that we have to flex in order to save money. We avoid that thing. 
Nah, you got to run towards that. You got to run towards that discipline. Remember, the scripture tell you that the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee to see. So discipline is part of the Holy Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit. You disciplining yourself financially. Come on, let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 6. <clears throat> go ahead. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 6. This is another tool you can use to save money. Come on. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? Mm -hmm. To loose the bands of wickedness? Mm -hmm. To undo the heavy burdens? Mm -hmm. And to let the oppressed go free? Mm -hmm. And that ye break every yoke? So part of what you can do to save money, another thing you can do is you can fast. Read it again. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? Yep. To loose the bands of wickedness. So us loosening the bands of wickedness, us trying to find some type of release in this in this oppression that we in, we can fast, right? You fast when you fast. Guess what? You didn't spend spend money on lunch. You didn't spend money on dinner. You can fast. You know what I'm saying? Another thing you can do is you can pack your lunch, right? These are things you can do to try to make sure, hey, you have a little bit more money to save, right? Uh, let's go to uh, Luke chapter 19. We're gonna start at verse 21. This is the book of Luke, chapter 19 and verse 21. Yeah. For I fared thee, because thou art an austere man. So remember, this the, the Lord had gave these men three uh these three men uh talents, right? Meaning finances to go out there and make something with this money, invest it, find a way to to, to make profit off of this money. Come on. Thou takest up that thou layest not down, mm -hmm. and reapest that thou didst not sow. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee. Mm -hmm. Thou wicked servant. So he called this man wicked. Why? Remember this man, he took the money and he went and hid it in a napkin. He didn't do nothing with these finances to, to make any type of profit. He didn't take the finances and invest it in no type of way. Come on. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, mm -hmm. taking up that I laid not down, mm -hmm. and reaping that I did not sow. Go ahead. Wherefore, then givest not thou my money in the bank. He could have at least put the money in the bank. Go ahead. That I'm, that at my coming, I might have required my own with usury. Mm -hmm. So you can, so it, when you put your money in the bank, at least you get some type of small amount of interest. But I mean, what we do again, what we do as a people, we, we go to the check casting place. We go down to the payday loan place and we think that that's a way for us to make progress. No, 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 no. So with that, Israel, I want you to understand the things you can do in order to save money. Like we were saying, right? To move to the next level of repentance, you want to start saving money. You can do things like fast, right? Pack your lunch and budget, right? Write down everything that's coming in and going out and do that for about 30 days. And you'll see a change in your finances when you start writing down things consistently. Everything that's going in, everything that's coming out, you'll see some changes in your finances, Israel. So with that, I say shalom. Most sign Christ bless. Most sign Christ bless. We used to scream black power. While Heron was pushed But at the end of the day Nothing's in vain IUIC Has been given a vision The tents of Judah has risen Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes Gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.